Students, we already know the derivation of y is equal to 1 upon ax plus b. The nth derivative was minus 1 raised to n, a raised to n, isn't it, into n factorial and then whole divided by ax plus b raised to n plus 1. Now, once we know the derivation of y is equal to 1 upon ax plus b, we are going to do a very similar derivation now where y is going to be log of ax plus b. So once you see y is equal to log of ax plus b is your standard function, what is y1 going to be? y1 is going to be 1 upon ax plus b. Now this 1 upon ax plus b is nothing but a standard function and then you have to reach at yn. So this derivation is more or less very similar to y is equal to 1 upon ax plus b. But still students, we are going to find the nth order derivative of y is equal to log of ax plus b. Now before you watch this entire video, I want you to try the derivation for y is equal to log of ax plus b. Once you have seen what this function is and how the derivation is going to be. Once you get your own answer, then you can watch this entire video to check the steps. So students, let's begin with the standard function y is equal to log of ax plus b. So as I have the function now, y is equal to log of ax plus b, I would call this as equation 1. Now let's differentiate both sides with respect to x. So I'm going to differentiate 2 or 3 times and then I can generalize for the nth order derivative. So here I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So what is y1 going to be? So let's don't we know the derivative of log x is 1 upon x. So log of ax plus b will be 1 upon ax plus b and again I have to differentiate ax plus b with respect to x using the concept of chain rule or we can say the composite function. So this is like log x but in place of x you have a function. So the function needs to be again differentiated ahead. So what is derivative of log? It is 1 upon. 1 upon what? ax plus b. So again derivative of ax plus b which is a. So I can write y1 is a upon ax plus b. Let's call this relation as the second equation. Now again differentiate both sides. So let's again differentiate both sides with respect to x. So I get y2 a is a constant, isn't it? I know the derivative of 1 upon x. 1 upon x, the derivative is minus 1 upon x square. This is not x. This is ax plus b, a function of x. So it will be again differentiated ahead. So what is derivative of 1 upon ax plus b? It is going to be minus 1 upon ax plus b, the whole square, into again the derivative of ax plus b which is a. So students, what is y2 equal to? So can I say y2 is going to be minus 1, the negative one I have taken, into say 1, isn't it? I have brought 1 additional a into a, that's a square upon ax plus b, the whole square. Let's call this as the third equation. So I've got y2 students. Now let's again differentiate both sides with its respect to x. So again, differentiate both sides with respect to x. So I'm going to get y3 now, isn't it? So let's get y3. So here, these terms are all constants. Minus 1, then this 1, then a square. They're all constants. So I can write minus 1 into 1 into a square. We remember 1 upon x raised to n, if that's my function, y is equal to 1 upon x raised to n. What is the derivative dy by dx or you can say y1? It becomes minus n upon x raised to n plus 1. So here what is the derivative going to happen for 1 upon ax plus b the whole square? All these terms, all these terms were all constant. So they have been kept aside. 1 upon ax plus b the whole square. The derivative is minus 2 minus n upon ax plus b the whole cube into again the derivative of ax plus b which is a. So I've got one more negative sign. So this minus 1 and this minus 1 becomes plus 1 but I'm not going to write it as plus 1. I'll be writing instead minus 1 square. Then there is 1 into 2. So I write 1 into 2 then a square into a. That's a cube upon 
ax plus b the whole q. I'm going to call this as the fourth relation. Now you can observe that y3 is coming minus 1 square. y2 has come minus 1 raised to 1. So if I proceed further, can I say if I want to write for y4, can you tell me the derivative? So y3 got me minus 1 square. y4 will give me minus 1 cube then y3 has got me 1 into 2 so that's 1 into 2 that's 2 factorial so y3 has got me 2 factorial y4 will get me 3 factorial then y3 has got me a cube y2 has got me a square then y4 is definitely going to get me a raised to 4 isn't it and then y3 has given me ax plus b the whole cube y2 has given me ax plus b the whole square so y4 is going to give me ax plus b raised to 4. Let's call this as equation number 5. So now are we in a position to generalize this particular term? So I can say the nth order derivative in general can be given as y n is equal to for 4 it has come 3, for 3 it has come 2. So for n it will come minus 1 raised to n minus 1. For 4 it has come 3 factorial. For 3 it has come 2 factorial. Isn't it? This 1 into 2 is basically 2 factorial. 1 can be written as 1 factorial. So for 2 it is 1 factorial. For 3 it is 2 factorial. For 4 it is 3 factorial. For n then it is going to be n minus 1 factorial. Likewise students for y3 I've got a3, y4 I've got a raised to 4. So yn I'll be getting a raised to n upon for 4 it is power to the 4 ax plus b raised to 4. So here you get ax plus b raised to n. So that is your nth order derivative for what function? What is your function? Your function is log of ax plus b. So can you see that this particular derivation is exactly similar to we have learned y is equal to 1 upon ax plus b. The only difference you can observe that it is just one step ahead, one derivative ahead of it, isn't it? We had y as 1 upon ax plus b. Here y1 is 1 upon ax plus b. So that has made the difference over here in the terms that you can find in the nth order derivative. If you recall for 1 upon ax plus b, what is the nth order derivative? Minus 1 raised to n n factorial a raised to n ax plus b raised to n plus 1 is it right? so can you say that n is replaced with n minus 1 here n is replaced with n minus 1 you will get your answer so uh, the only difference that you need to take care of is a raised to n isn't it so a raised to n is coming exactly same in both the formulas otherwise you simply need to replace n with n minus 1. So students, this was all about the derivation of y is equal to log of ax plus b. Now we can proceed ahead with some more standard formulas.